A park ranger stands front facing in uniform of a tan flat hat, gray shirt, and green trousers. The ranger stands in a grassy field with a row of trees behind him. Immediately behind the ranger stands a 30 foot tall granite monument consisting of two step base measuring seven feet square and a pedestal with four carved stone cannon tubes at the corners that support an obelisk. Good afternoon. My name is Brian Autry. I am a park ranger at Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. As we commemorate the 157th anniversary of the Battle of Chickamauga, we wanted to highlight a soldier and his unwavering determination of service to his state and the strength he had to care for his family after the war. His, this soldier's name is John Newton Sloan, pictured here with dark hair, a full beard, wearing a dark military jacket with a single roll of brass buttons down the front and a waist belt. A double barrel shotgun resting on his left shoulder being cradled in the elbow of his left arm and left hand resting on his chest. Sloan served with the 45th Mississippi Infantry, which was part of Claiborne's Division, Woods Brigade, Lowry's Regiment. This brigade was made up mostly of Alabamians and Mississippians. On September the 20th of 1863, Captain Sloan found himself fighting in this vicinity, uh, where today the Alabama Monument stands uh, behind me. During the fight, a shell exploded just out front of, of Captain Sloan and a piece of the jagged iron shrapnel, like I'm holding here, ripped his lower jaw off. As you can see in the photo of Sloan, with the receding hairline, disfigured face, full beard, dark jacket, and a white cotton shirt, and a tin funnel pinned to his jacket. Sloan was taken to the surgeons and they said nothing could be done for him. So a friend took him to Ringo where surgeons finished amputating his jaw and sewed his nose back to his face. As time went by, Captain Sloan recovered. You notice back on the photo, he had the tin funnel pinned to his jacket. That was his plate, basically. He had to use it for the rest of his life. He had to have his food liquefied and placed in the funnel. Then he had to sit in a reclining position so gravity would help him swallow his food. Sloan requested not to be discharged until he recovered and was able to soldier again. However, Sloan's injury never allowed him to serve any longer. In 1895, Captain Sloan was able to attend the dedication of this park. While he was here, he wanted to go back to the area where he was wounded to see if he could find his teeth. He and a couple of his comrades, who were with him that fateful day, started scratching around on the ground. It wasn't long before three teeth were found. Sloan made the remark that he did think the teeth were his. Captain Sloan had a remarkable attitude while enduring the physical and mental stress of the injury left him, that left him dealing with it every day. He worked for 25 years after the war as Chancellor Court Clerk in his hometown of Pontotoc, Mississippi to support his family. Today, we are still hearing stories of war-torn so uh, soldiers coming home as they still are dealing with incredible injuries, both physical and mental. Today, some 22 veterans and active duty personnel commit suicide each day. However, there are many, just like Captain Sloan, who are going forward with their lives and caring for their families, and sometimes that's very hard. So today, as we commemorate the 157th anniversary of the Battle of Chickamauga, keep our veterans and our active duty personnel in your thoughts, and if you see one of them, thank them for their sacrifices they made in our, and are making to keep the, this nation the home of the free. Thank you for watching this program, and we hope you will continue to follow the remainder of our anniversary programs.